Hello everyone, my name is Iman and this is my presentation on frequency tracking of biological waveforms. The main objective in this video is to show you how to work with my MATLAB GUI called F-Tracker or Frequency Tracker. The GUI implements a particle filter to track the frequency of a monocomponent signal, which basically means there is a single dominant frequency. The method can be used to track echolocation signals used by bats to find the objects in a space. Some of these signals are very complicated, therefore, a model-based approach would not be appropriate to track the frequency. That's why this GUI implements the particle filter, which does not use a model and is based on Monte Carlo simulations. Let's see how to work with the GUI. Basically, when you open F-Tracker, there are three main menus. The first one can be used to create and track frequency of a synthetic linear chirp, which is corrupted by white Gaussian noise. The second menu can be used to test the frequency tracking algorithm with the actual bat calls. Finally, the last menu includes the general settings used by the algorithm. The particle filter used in this GUI is called Sequential Importance Resampling or SIR. So resampling is critical in the algorithm. This push button enables us to see the impact of resampling which I'm going to illustrate soon. To test the GUI, let's start with a default synthetic signal. The time range is from 0 to 500. The frequency is 0.1 at 0 and 0.4 at 500. The SNR or signal to noise ratio is set to 12 dB. Number of particles or n in the particle filter is set to 50. As you increase n, the accuracy of the estimated frequency increases at the cost of higher computational complexity. The length of observation window, or L, is set to 31. Larger value for L results in more accurate estimate as more data is available at the cost of higher computation. Sigma of the process noise is the standard deviation of the process noise. This parameter is very interesting and you can think of it as a learning step size in an optimization algorithm. If you set it to a very small value, it takes a long time for the algorithm to converge. On the other hand, if you set it to a very large number, there might be spikes in the estimated frequency which can be interpreted as unstable moments. I will talk more about this soon. Let's press start. In this graph, you can see short time Fourier transform of the synthetic chirp. The amplitude goes up as we move from yellow to red color. So the dominant frequency is where the color is the dark red. Also, here, the blue trajectory is the estimated frequency at different time steps. As you can see, the algorithm performs well and the frequency estimate is very close to the actual frequency. Let's see the impact of number of particles on the performance. First, I'm going to set n to 5. Here we go. As you can see, the algorithm can still follow the linear trend, but there are a lot of fluctuations around the actual frequencies. Now, let's set n to 500. As you can see, the algorithm needs more time to finish, but the performance gets much better. To recap, in general, more particles lead to a better performance at the cost of higher computation. Now let's see the impact of L on the performance. First, let me set N to the initial value, i.e. 50, and here's the result again. Now I'm going to set L to 15. As you can see, there is more fluctuations and therefore the performance goes down. Now let's set L to 63. In this case, we observed more data before judging the frequency. So the performance should get better. Okay, let's set L to 31 again and run it one more time. Okay, let's study the algorithm behavior when we change sigma of the process noise. As I already mentioned, you can think of this value as the learning step size. Now I'm going to explain why. First, let's set sigma to a very small number, for example, 0 0.004. As you can see, the algorithm needs more time to find the actual dominant frequency. To justify this behavior, let's look at the resampling impact. We use the process noise to randomly draw particles around the expected value. Now, if the sigma or a standard deviation is small, all the random samples are close to each other, 
and basically our search space is very limited. So the algorithm goes slow and safe to find a dominant frequency. Now let's go back to point zero 02. In this case, algorithm converge much faster because the randomly drawn particles cover larger space. So the search area in each time step is wider and that's why the algorithm finds the dominant frequency faster. Since we are here, let me also explain the impact of resampling. In these plots, the red dots are the random particles and the blue dot is the mean frequency across all the particles at each time step. As I already mentioned, resampling of random particles is a critical step. The main purpose behind resampling is to keep the particles that are more likely to be true, i.e. the ones that have higher importance weights, and ignore the rest. By doing that, the resampled particles are getting much closer to the actual frequency, and if we consider, for example, the average as the estimated frequency, it's clear that the result is more accurate. Also, as the dispersion of particles or variance is very small, we can claim that we are very confident about the estimated value. Okay, that's all I want to say about resampling. Now, let's see what's going to happen if the sigma of the process noise is very high. For example, 0.2. In this case, because the random particles are all over the place, we should end up with spikes or jumps in the estimated frequency. And we can say the algorithm moves too fast. So here's the conclusion. Very small sigma delays the convergence of particle filter, and very large sigma causes spikes. One possible approach to go fast and smooth is to have a dynamic sigma. At the beginning, we should start with a large sigma, and after the convergence, we can decrease the sigma to avoid the spikes. Okay, let's go back to point zero 02. This GUI also allows you to compare the performance for different L or SNRs. For instance, I want to compare three windows length, 15, 31, and 63. In this graph, you can see the relative percentage error versus different frequencies. As you can see, in general, larger L or window size results in a better performance as more observations are available. Also, you can do this comparison for different SNRs, for example, minus 10, 0, and 10 dB. In general, performance gets better as the noise level drops. Okay, I guess we are done with the synthetic signals. Just one more thing, you can easily change the time range, frequency range, and SNR, SNR level. For example, let's go from 0.3 Hz to 0 and set SNR to 5 dB. Here's the result. Now, let's move on to the next menu. By using this menu, you can test the algorithm with the actual echolocation signals collected from a bat. Press on the bat to see the test signals. Let's start with the bat test number one. On this plot, you can see the actual signal in the time domain. Again, here you can see the short time Fourier transform overlaid with the estimated frequency. To improve the performance, I'm going to increase the number of particles to 500. Here we go. For the next example, I'm going to use the bat test number 3. Despite the fact that this signal has a very complicated pattern, the algorithm performance is actually acceptable. For the last test, I'm going to select the bat test number 5. Here's the final answer. It's interesting to look at the resampling impact again. When the algorithm converges to the dominant frequency, the dispersion of the resampled particles or variance is very small, which means we are very confident about the estimated frequency. The variance increases at the end, as it seems the dominant frequency is gone. Okay, that's all I want to say in this video. Thanks a lot for giving me your time and watching this presentation. Have fun with the F-Tracker and see you in the next video.